This is every glitch that still exists in LEGO Fortnite. So the first one that I want to start off with is a brand new duplication glitch that I believe was just recently found. It has to do with your Star Wars Island and the campfire that is located in this area of your map. If you guys didn't know, when it comes to that campfire that's in the Star Wars Village, every single time that you break that and respawn in, it's going to go and spawn right back in the exact same place that it was previously, as it's 100% part of the Star Wars Village and technically can't actually be destroyed. So now once I load back into that world, I am standing directly on the campfire that previously existed. And when I go into my inventory, I now have two wood and one torch. So I can break this again and now have double the amount of wood and double the amount of torches all by duplicating this one campfire in the Star Wars area. I will say this is probably the second worst duplication glitch that's ever existed in the game behind the torch in the item post, but this is at least still something that exists in the game. Now, by far my favorite glitch that exists in the game right now is the infinite storm core and blast core glitch that exists inside of regular dry valley caves. So this does not work inside of the Star Wars ones, but you guys can find these pretty much in any cave in the game that has these blast core or these blast shells inside of it. Inside of this one room in particular, however, inside of seed number seven, this has six or seven total spawners in it that allows you to repeatedly jump attack these blast core shells and get yourself an unlimited amount of storm core and blast core in the process. The beautiful thing about this glitch or exploit or trick is that you can just continue to roam around this room or exit it and join back and you'll continue to find new ones that spawn every single time. I also know that that sometimes people give me a hard time about what I call glitches that they might be calling an exploit or simply a bug. But again, as I've said before, anything that gives the player a strong advantage that definitely was not intended to be in the game, in my opinion, is a glitch that I'm sure Epic is going to work on fixing at some point in time in the future. So this one right here, allowing you to have six or seven respawners for the blast core is definitely something that I see being a glitch in the game that they will definitely patch in the future, especially after seeing this video and truly how easy it is to get an unlimited amount of these things. Now this next one is kind of a two in one glitch, but we'll focus on this first part first. When it comes to the brute spawn glitch, what you guys are able to do is place down map markers to indicate where you've seen a brute. Specifically on top of the Star Wars Island, this is much easier to get done, although this can be done in your normal areas as well. What I recommend doing is if you were to see a brute out in the wild, simply place down a map marker just to indicate to yourself that there's a brute in that location. What you're going to be able to do is actually leave the game and rejoin back in, and after you do that a few times, times over, you should be able to force a respawn out of the brute, which ultimately is going to allow you to fight an unlimited amount of them and continue to get brute scales in the same exact spot based off that respawn point. The second part about this is actually going to be the limit that it has when it comes to the brutes and their range. If you guys didn't know in this game, brutes are the only creature currently that have a range that they're actually able to move around in. Some people believe that it is per biome. Some people believe that it's just a certain amount of meters. Nonetheless, no matter how it is, they have a certain amount of range that they're able to move around in. So what this means for you is that when you're able to respawn them over and over again in an area, you're actually able to find a sweet spot that will allow you to run to a certain distance and that brute will not be able to follow you any longer, allowing you to sit at that distance with your crossbow out and continue to rain arrows on them and there is nothing that they can do about it, allowing you you to once again get an unlimited amount of brute scale without much effort whatsoever. Now this is one of those probably not a glitch, but definitely something that wasn't intended in the game. If you guys didn't know, Epic actually made the critical damage something in the game when you put these shell crabs onto their back. And then Epic made the decision to make jump tacks do critical damage as well. Critical damage is two times damage than what you would typically do. But if you guys didn't know, now when it comes to these shell crabs, if you put them on your back and then do a jumping attack, 
rather than doing two times critical damage, you now do four times critical damage. Now, I was honestly surprised on a recent video of mine that more people didn't realize that this was a thing in the game. But if you guys did not know, using a pickaxe on crabs is much better when it comes to doing damage and killing them a little bit faster. Inside of the dry valley, snow biome, and grasslands, when it comes to these shell crabs or the rollers, you're going to do more damage by using your pickaxe. Even with using the critical damage, it doesn't matter. It'll always do more damage than the sword, crossbow, or lightsaber. When it comes to the blast core or those blast shell blast rollers that are inside of the dry valley, using a pickaxe is much better. And one of my favorite tricks or exploits to use in the game is using a pickaxe and my glider in order to do the pickaxe glider glitch. What this does is allows you to travel much further and even a little bit higher when it comes to gliding around the map without using as much stamina. If you guys have not practiced this, it can be done on both controller and on mouse and keyboard. All that you need to do is deploy your glider, let go of your glider and swing your pickaxe. And while you're in the animation of swinging your pickaxe, pull your glider right back out and then repeat that little trick. What this is going to do is propel yourself forward with the pickaxe and then allow you to glide a little bit longer while not really moving much of that stamina bar with your glider. This does not work when it comes to using a sword, shovel, forest axe, or any other weapon in the game. It is exclusive to the pickaxe, which is why I consider this a glitch, exploit, bug, whatever you guys wanna call it. This is an issue in the game that they have not addressed and kind of just allowed us to have, which is really cool of them. However, not everybody is using it as much as they probably should. This saves me a lot of time when it comes to running, does do a good job of preventing me from dying as I can sit there and swing my pickaxe and not really waste so much stamina. And overall, this is a much better way to travel around the map. Now for this final glitch, I want you guys to make sure that you have a very large plot of garden that's going to have spicy peppers and then snowberries around that area as that is going to be the best part about this final glitch here. And if you guys watch my Let's Play series, especially when it comes to my expert mode world, this is one of my favorite things to to use or abuse in Lego Fortnite. Now this is about 15 glitches all in one. This has to do with that garden plot I was just talking about in which I picked every snowberry and spicy pepper that came out of these plots. If you guys didn't know, one single seed can grow an unlimited amount of these food items. Now one really nice glitch that has to do with these is if actually when you pull all of them and you leave the game and then rejoin back in, every single one of these garden plots are going to refill with that food item. Meaning if I were to pick every single spicy pepper and snowberry, leave and rejoin, all of them will regrow by the time I rejoin back in. Now the second part to this is actually pretty simple. What we're going to do is throw all of these peppers into the grain mill. So if I throw 15 spicy peppers into the grain mill, I'm going to get 30 seed back in return. I'm gonna do that same exact thing with these snowberries. Those once again, still duplicate back. So putting 20 six of them in there isn't going to give me 26 seeds. It's actually going to give me 52 seeds. And taking those is actually going to be awesome for us to make a few different items. So now let's talk about the final three glitches that we're able to do now that we have 30 pepper seeds in our inventory. What I like to do is split them in half because I already have an established garden or plot right here. But what you guys can do is actually place down more of them to expand your garden. The second thing that you could do is throw these pepper seeds into a compost bin to give yourself some biomass. So effectively, we just created an unlimited biomass farm. The second thing that you can do is take the other half of these and throw them into a barn that has a cow. That's going to give you an unlimited amount of spicy burgers. So now not only do we have unlimited spicy burgers, pepper seeds, spicy peppers, but we also have an unlimited amount of biomass. Now the final part about this has to do with those snowberries. This is going to work the exact same way. One of three things can happen. You can plant down a bunch of these plots and go ahead and continue to grow your area, throw some of that into a compost bin and give yourself a bunch of biomass or throw them into a barn with a cow to give yourself an unlimited amount of snowberry shakes. Regardless, you're getting a ton for very little amount of work.